Hello, I am Ron Chen and I am going to teach you about the ancient Chinese art and philosophy of feng shui. People are getting divorced, uh, there might be a new child that comes in, uh, maybe the grandparent is moving in, or maybe there's separation. So they need to uh, change the chi or the energy of their personal space. Om mani padme hum, om mani padme hum. Feed the hungry ghosts. I am like an acupuncture needle living in New York City, trying to create peace and tranquility and harmony through our spaces. Open up your palms, welcome the chi. I am R.D. Chen, and I am a feng shui master and architect. I have created a feng shui practice where I do consultations for corporations, companies, offices, residential, and even urban planning. This apartment has a lot of male energy here. A nice way to kind of balance off male energy is to put more female energy. Feng shui is really based on nature. And that's what the Chinese have used. That is their science or technology, is looking at nature's cycles, and then they apply it to our life. And then they apply it to our spaces. Being an architect, we have to be mindful of the budget. We have to be mindful of the client's needs, of course. And uh, this is the overall site plan here. But it's interesting, how do you connect the magic of feng shui or the uh, energy or chi of feng shui to the contemporary world. Personally for me, I'm always interested about energy. I also believe in synchronicity or coincidences. This happened to be during Memorial Day weekend. And I said, Mom, let's go to Dad's grave site and I'd like to do a little blessing ceremony. And my mom was very touched, very emotional and said, you know, I think dad would have liked this because he was a Buddhist. We grew up in a Baptist church in Arlington, Massachusetts, and here I am, all of a sudden, feng shui has actually helped me reconnect back to my cultural heritage. Ancient Chinese philosophy has gone from Eastern mysticism to American mainstream in less than a decade, making feng shui a multi-million dollar business here in the U.S. I feel very grateful. I get consultation from major companies such as uh, Standard Chartered Bank, Goldman Sachs. They call for feng shui because their bottom line is they want to have a good profit at the end of the year. Talk about raising the chi bar, so to speak. This is one of the major projects that I worked on with Standard Chartered Bank. When they moved to this building, they had three empty floors. And so they brought me in to meet with the architects to determine the major areas of how to place the offices for the three floors. So this is a lot of sketches and drawings. They had feng shui when they were located in the World Trade Center originally, and the feng shui master told them to stay on the lower floors. So therefore, on 9-11, they do not lose anybody. I put my feng shui evaluation over the floor plan, and this is where I made a suggestion of showing the various areas of the elements on the floor plan and the bagua. And we can place the connecting uh, stairs anywhere on this floor plate. So my proposal was to place the connecting stairs towards the back rear of the building noted as the Wealth and Power Corner. And the Wealth and Power Corner is associated with wood energy. And so I proposed to have a living plant wall, and they did it. So they actually put a three-story living plant wall in the connecting stairs. You have to visit it. It's absolutely fantastic. Tortoise Mountains, the Dragon and Tiger Hills, and it looks to the very beautiful view of Bryan Park, which is in the front of the building. In addition to that, I also did a blessing ceremony known as the Tracing of the Nine Stars. So you'll see photographs of me with the various department heads, and we threw rice 
and orange peels and did an orange peel and the tracing of the nine stars to bless the space. I don't know whether they wanted to let people know that I do this work for them because in a way that's their secret about how they're maintaining their chi presence in the business world. It's like the emperors of China. When the emperors died, they also killed off their feng shui masters. Now here's Dee. She is the designer for this client's home. The students who come to study with me come from an incredible variety of backgrounds. I have interior designers. I have some architects. I have people who are just interested in Chinese philosophy. Fireplace? Yeah. That's in the fame size. So actually, that's quite nice because you have an addition of energy. They just see me as a teacher to teach them a much larger perspective about what does it mean to enhance the quality of a life. And feng shui seems to be that beautiful umbrella to talk about art or to talk about creating space or to talk about an urban plan or to talk about a residence or a company. And the next certificate goes to Melissa Rosati. Peels represent auspicious gold energy radiating through your entire space. One, two, three. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my on one perspective, there is a lot of superstition attached to feng shui, but in my opinion, I think it's really about how people see the space. The invisible is just as powerful as the visible. And let's just close with thanks and may this documentary be filled with lots of prosperity and surprises.